Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. In this video I'm going to show you guys how I and how you can as a Fekka run the Sphincter Cell dungeon. The dungeon itself is pretty easy but the boss can be a bit tricky but more on that later. And the reason why I'm running Sphincter Cell is because it's pretty good money if you use soul capture to capture the boss. People often use these souls to power level in their arena so they sell very often and they sell for quite a lot. But before you even attempt to run Sphincter Cell, you need to get a few things out of the way. There are some requirements. First and foremost, you need the keys. You need the first Sphincter Dungeon key, which you get from the White Rat, and the second Sphincter Dungeon key, which you get from Black Rat. If you're unsure on how to get those, you can watch my other videos that I've done on those dungeons. These keys are quest items, so you cannot buy them. Second of all, there are some stat requirements for this, but if you're around level 160 plus, I don't think this should be too much of a problem getting. When I first started running this, I had some really scuffed gear set up, just to reach this requirement. When I started doing this, I think I was level 187 or 186, and once I got to 189 and could afford my gladiator worker set, as well as scrolling my agility, getting these requirements wasn't a problem. Thankfully you only need this gear setup when you're fighting the boss, so if you're using this scuffed gear setup you can just change back to your regular combat gear for the dungeon part. Because the dungeon is it's easy but it is kinda long, especially if you're on the weaker side, so I would highly recommend grabbing another Fekka and duoing the dungeon. But then you just split up at the boss and you both cap it. It's a win-win. Here's some footage of me running the dungeon. If you're not interested in that, you can skip forward to where I explain how to kill the boss. Thank you. 
So coming up here we have what is my favorite room of the dungeon as a Fekka. What you want to do here is teleport to this tile specifically if you're solo. If you're doing this with someone else you can use these two tiles up here. So what is going to happen here is that the orange rats are going to buff everyone's MP and they're very quickly going to gang up on you. So if you're standing in either of these positions, they're gonna line up perfectly for you to just use your weapon or glyph them or whatever you want. You should also try to throw up some shields. These guys can hit for quite a lot. There we go, we're finally at the boss. But before we jump straight into the fight, I want to go over the strategy and what our plans are in this fight. And I do want to preface this by saying that this is how I do it and how I learned to do it. There might be more optimal ways of doing it. It's worked very well for me, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work well for you as well. So this is Sphincter Cell. He has between 8000 and 10,000 HP, depending on his level and his resistances are 200% across the board. This is not good. This means we can't damage him, basically. He also has three spells. He has Mutagen, Shortcut, and Razor. Razor will hit any adjacent cell five different times, once for each element. This spell is very dangerous, but hopefully you'll never get hit by it. His second spell, Shortcut, it's basically like a Fekka teleport, but it lasts only 6 cells. And for his last spell, Mutagen. This is what is going to make it possible for us to damage him eventually. When Sphincter Cell uses this spell, he summons a turtle. There are 4 different turtles he can summon, one for each element except neutral I guess. Every turn a creature spends adjacent to a turtle, the turtle is going to lower their resistances with 200% of that turtle's color. This goes for the player as well as all of the enemies. As the turtle does this, he also gains 600 HP. 
So the goal for this fight is to get into a position where both you and Sphincter Cell are adjacent to a turtle. And in our case it has to be a red turtle, because Fekas don't really have any close combat attacks that are any other elements other than neutral, which there isn't a turtle for. Sounds easy enough, right? And I wish it was. But there are some things that are making it more difficult. For example, the white rat. He's easy enough in his own dungeon, but if you've been standing next to a green turtle for a few turns and have like minus 600% earth resistance, the white rat is gonna hit like a truck. The white rat has two attacks, and they're both pretty problematic for what we're trying to do. His first attack, Ravages. This attack reaches for three cells and deals earth damage. It does not require line of sight, which means he can attack through other monsters, so even though you think you're safe, you might not be. His second attack is Rack. It reaches for two cells instead of three and deals fire damage. So if the only thing that's between you and the white rat is the red turtle, you better hope you kill him before he kills you. So, with the white rat out of the way, there's really not that many dangers to this. But the other issue we have is getting Sphincter Cell to give us the right turtle. I haven't mentioned this yet, but this run can actually be pretty RNG dependent. If you get bad luck, killing this boss can take like 40 minutes, or worst case scenario, you might even die before finishing. But with good RNG, we can kill him in like 5 minutes, which if you ask me, that's pretty fast. And the run I'm going to show you guys today is one of average luck, I would say. This is how they most often look like. So with that boring explanation out of the way, let me just show you how to do it. As you can see here, I'm making sure I've equipped the soul stone, making sure I have a right amount of AP, MP, initiative and agility. The reason you need at least 1500 initiative is to make sure that you go before Sphincter Cell. What I do in the beginning here is checking the position of Sphincter Cell. As you can see, he's spawned on the left side of the map, so I go to the right corner. I place down an aggressive glyph, as well as put immunity or spell rebound on myself. The reason we put the glyph down is to force Sphincter Cell to summon the turtle in front of me, because he will never put a summon on a glyph. As you can see, this time we wasn't that lucky, we got a blue turtle. It lowered my water resistance with 200%, but knowing that the only thing that can hit me is White Rat, I'm not really in that much of a danger, since his attacks is either Earth or Fire. This turn I throw down a Flaming Glyph, to make sure to damage the turtle in front of me a little bit. Because when we're changing sides, which we'll get to very soon, he's not going to be adjacent to me anymore, which means he's not going to gain the 600 vitality, he's going to lose the buff, which will kill him, as long as I've dealt some damage to him before. The reason it's important to kill the turtle is because if there's already four turtles on the map, the Sphincter Cell will never spawn another one. When White Rat is in this position right here, diagonally to me, he cannot hit me. So in this moment, I know I'm not in any real risk of taking damage at all. At this point, I know I'm not gonna die to the White Rat, so I'm just waiting to get my teleport back so I can switch sides and get the Sphincter Cell to summon a new turtle. As my teleport is coming off cooldown, I'm getting ready to switch sides. I start off by putting Spell Rebound or Immunity on myself, just in case they critical failure. If I don't put Spell Rebound or Immunity on myself, there is a risk Sphincter Cell is going to teleport to where I want the turtle to be and hit me instead. But he won't do that if he knows he won't be able to hit me, because I have Immunity, for example. And here I'm getting ready to teleport. When you're teleporting, you have to be pretty specific. You need to go to this specific tile, or else you won't have enough MP to go where you want to go. Right after you teleported, you want to place a glyph down. 
You want to make sure the glyph covers as much area as possible while leaving these two tiles unglyphed. Because remember, Sphincter Cell will never put a turtle on a glyph. So what I tend to do is place a paralyzing glyph on this specific tile right next to me. Let's see how this plays out. Perfect, wrong turtle again. So what I'm going to do here is stall it out. I'm going to wait until I get Teleport, Paralyzing Glyph and Spell Rebound back. I might throw up some shields or some other defensive spells in case White Rat ends up in an unfavorable position. But if not, I just got to wait until I get my spells back. Here I'm making sure to kill the stray turtles, because remember, if there's four turtles on the map, Sphincter Cell won't spawn any other ones. Here I'm getting ready to teleport again. Teleporting from the left to the right side is a lot more sketchy than teleporting from the right to the left side. Here you need to be really specific. Sometimes even if you're doing everything right, Sphincter Cell just won't behave. And this side is a bit different, because you need to use your Burning Glyph. What you want to do here is place your Burning Glyph on this specific tile. You want it to both hit the turtle and cover as much area as possible, right? And then you want to teleport to this specific area. So you also need to make sure this bridge area is clear, because if there's monsters on it, you can't teleport to it. Or if you teleport next to them, you risk getting locked. After teleporting, you want to place your paralyzing glyph on this specific tile and walk to this specific tile. And the reason you're doing that is to keep as much distance between you and Sphincter Cell as, as possible, as well as keeping him from teleporting next to you. Because same with the turtles, Sphincter Cell won't teleport on top of a glyph. After doing that, you have to skip your turn and pray Sphincter Cell behaves. As soon as it's your turn again, you run right up to the corner, you place an aggressive glyph on this specific tile, and immune yourself. Now, let's see how this plays out. There we go, red turtle. As you can see, I'm very happy. Even if I have a red turtle, white rat is kind of in a sketchy position right now. Remember, he has a fire attack and I have like minus 200 fire res at this point. So what I'm doing here is throwing up truce on myself. And the reason I'm doing that is because I know that on the white rat's turn he's going to move to the tile in front of me. And as long as Truce is up, no one on the battlefield is going to take any damage. But while Truce is up, the fire weakness is still building on the white rat. Which means he's gonna have minus a few hundred fire resist when Truce is over. Which means my glyphs are going to do a lot of damage to him. And I still have immunity to keep myself alive. I wasn't confident my fire glyph was gonna kill him in one turn, so I put some shields on myself to brace for the impact from the white rat. Here you can see me placing down the glyph of blindness. Sometimes in sketchy situations I do that to try to keep the white rat from attacking.
With White Rat dead, there's no risk anymore. Smooth sailing from here. Just don't forget to use the soul capture. There we go, easy as that, we've killed Sphincter Zone. GG's. Another situation you're going to run into when running Sphincter Cell is sometimes the monsters will get stuck on the other side of this chasm. When you're just starting out learning to do this, when White Rat is on the other side of the chasm, that's like your perfect runs. Because it's safe, right? He can't hit you from there, and you can still hit him with like glyphs, backlash, cloudy attack, natural attack, even bubble if he's not linear with you. Doing this is probably gonna take some time though, but it's safe, right? So I do recommend it in the beginning. Because most likely you are going to die a few times trying this. I've died a lot doing it, but once you get the hang of it, your success rate kind of gets up there. And even if you're getting bad luck, you're starting to survive more and more. Even if you get shit luck and Sphincter Cell won't behave at all, it doesn't mean the run is over. Sometimes you need to improvise a little. For example, this situation right here. I do the swap like usual, but Sphincter Cell wasn't in his usual position, so he spawns a turtle out of position. These are the situations I mean where you might need to improvise a little bit. Here I even crit fail my immunity, which means I won't have enough AP to place the glyph down. Thankfully we have enough AP to put spell rebound up at least. So from this point out I'm just fighting for my life, trying to survive until my teleported off cooldown and I can teleport to the other side again. Sometimes spells such as the Kawot and summoning a Schaefer can save your ass during this. But you need to be really careful when using Kawot, because Black Rat throws this spell on you. This spell basically insta-kills you if you receive any healing. So you have to be really careful when using Kawot. Either kill Black Rat first or make sure you're not standing in the glyph. But they can definitely be helpful in sketchy situations. As you can see here, I did survive just for Sphincter Cell to give me the wrong turtle. <laughs> but I guess that's just how it goes. But yeah guys, I think that's it for this video. But before ending the video, I want to give a huge shout out to my guildie, Doom Ducky. He's the guy who taught me how to do this. As soon as I come back to the game, he hopped on a Discord call with me and he showed me how it's done. He helped me with all of the requirements and stuff, so I'm super grateful for that. Is the reason I can make this video. And with that being said, I hope you guys are enjoying Temporis. And maybe when you come back, you'll attempt Sphincter Cell. Let me know what you guys thought of the video down in the comments. I love to read them all. And with that being said, love you guys. Bye bye.